Hi there, Riley Sai here. I'm going to make a couple videos about evolution, but first I want to talk about some common misconceptions that people have about evolution. First, let's start with the word evolution itself. Evolution simply means that something changes over a period of time. It doesn't have to do with living things. If an organization changes its ideals or mission, you can say that the organization evolves. But in life science, what we're really talking about is Charles Darwin's evolution by natural selection. It's just a theory. Well, yes it is. A scientific theory. You see, in science, the word theory does not mean a guess or a hunch. A theory is the strongest kind of statement that science makes. A scientific theory is the best explanation we have for a set of observations. For example, why do you get sick? Well, back before around 1880, the explanation was that bad air causes sickness. This was the miasma theory of disease. Essentially, people thought that you got sick from breathing air with the smell of rotting organic material. In 1880, scientists realized that this was wrong, and a better explanation was that there were things in the air or in water or on surfaces that they decided to call germs and that these germs cause disease. Germs are far too small to see with just your eyes. You need a microscope to have any chance of seeing one of them. This explanation is the germ theory of disease and that's what scientists and medical professionals use now. It explains why people get sick better than the old miasma theory. If scientists learn more about what causes diseases, and that conflicts with germ theory, then either the germ theory will have to be updated to account for it, or it will be replaced by a better explanation, a better theory. Scientific theories are the best explanation we have at the time. They aren't sacred. If we find that a theory can improve, we change it. If we find that a theory needs to be scrapped and replaced, we get rid of it. The theory of evolution is the best explanation we have that explains all the different variety of life on Earth and how it has changed over time. And the theory of evolution isn't going to become or change into the law of evolution. Scientific laws describe what happens. Like the law of gravity says that if I let go of this ball, it will fall to the floor. The law also describes how fast it will accelerate. But the theory of gravity explains why the law of gravity is what it is. It goes into masses warping the fabric of space-time. You can blame Einstein for the space-time stuff. One word that is used a lot when talking about evolution is adaptation. An adaptation is a trait that helps an organism survive and reproduce. So, an adaptation is a trait that is helpful in some way. But, individuals don't adapt. Many people think that individuals can adapt. That is, if it would be helpful for an organism to hear better, it could gain that adaptation during its life. This isn't so. 
If a mouse has poor hearing, it can't improve its hearing by just wishing about it. Heck, <laughs> I'd like to have a faster metabolism so I can get rid of some excess weight more easily. But that's just wishing, and it doesn't work that way. Evolution is about how populations adapt. A population is a group of the same kind of organism, species, in the same place at the same time. Part of the problem is that we tend to think about ourselves, humans, a lot. And humans are great at adapting or changing our environment to suit ourselves. But that's not humans evolving, that's us changing our surroundings. about a population of rabbits in a meadow. Each rabbit is slightly different from the other rabbits. If one rabbit is born with better coloring, better camouflage, it would probably survive better. It would likely have more baby rabbits, and they would inherit the better camouflage trait. Over a couple of generations, you would probably see this trait becoming more common in the population. If this happens, then the population has evolved. It has changed over a period of time. This didn't create a new species of rabbits, just a better variation, one with better camouflage. And at no point did one rabbit look at another and think, Boy, if I had that pattern of fur, I'd survive better. I'll start growing fur in that pattern. Individual rabbits were either born with a trait or not. Traits are not acquired. Think of an individual antelope in a herd of antelopes. They're really good runners, but let's say that one of them, let's call her Betty, works hard and becomes a better runner than others in the herd. This is an acquired characteristic. It appears during the individual's life because of its behavior. It also helps the individual survive and reproduce. So Betty may have more offspring than other antelopes because she is more fit and she lives longer because she can just outrun the predators. Do any of Betty's offspring have this trait of running faster than the other antelopes? Think about it for a second. No, none of them. An acquired characteristic like that isn't inherited. It isn't in her genes. It's just something that she trained herself to do. Consider Lester, a marathon runner. He is trained a lot to be able to run a very long distance. Would his children also have this ability? Well, only if they also trained a lot. It wouldn't be something that they could do automatically. An adaptation has to come about due to genetics. It has to be in the genes. Then, an offspring can inherit that adaptation. Adaptations can happen from mutations. A mutation is a random change in an organism's DNA. Many mutations do not lead to a change in phenotype. That is, they don't cause any difference in the way the organism looks or behaves. Other mutations are bad and can kill or make things harder for the individual. Ah, but some are helpful. They lead to an adaptation that helps the organism survive and reproduce. Let's consider another antelope. Let's call this one George. During his life, George gets a mutation that would make him run faster, like Betty. Does this help him? Think about it.
The mutation happens in one cell somewhere in George's body. Even if it occurred in a muscle cell, it wouldn't make the muscle, which is made of millions of cells, work better or faster. The mutation only helps that one cell. And it wouldn't affect any of George's offspring. The only way a mutation can help an individual is if all of the individual's cells have the mutation. In order for this to happen, the mutation needs to happen to a sex cell, a sperm or an egg of one of the parents. Now, if this mutation happened in George's mother's egg and George came from that fertilized egg, then all of George's cells would have the mutation and it can affect him. Now, George would be able to run faster and he could pass that trait on to his children. The vast majority of mutations happen in body cells, not in sex cells. So almost all mutations are not passed on to the next generation. Survival of the fittest means that only the strongest survive. Well, not necessarily. Fittest means the best able to survive and reproduce in the given environment. A better phrase would be, survival of the best adapted. These are just some of the misconceptions that many people have about evolution. And one last thing, it's not really Charles Darwin's evolution by natural selection anymore. Darwin set the stage with how species change over time by natural selection, but since he published his book, there have been lots of changes. Today, evolution is more correctly called the modern synthesis, or the extended evolutionary synthesis. This is because it isn't just what Darwin came up with. There's lots more in there now. The modern synthesis is made of lots of different scientific theories, explanations, including Malthusian competition, variation, mutation, natural selection, that one is from Darwin, genetic variation, Mendelian inheritance, and more. So you see that the theory of evolution has itself evolved and is much more than just what Charles Darwin wrote about back in 1859. As we'll see in another video, the basics of evolution aren't difficult concepts. It's pretty simple once you see what's going on. But that's for a later video. Thanks for watching. Riley Sigh out.